Um, today's topic, we'll be talking about how you can simplify your mig migration to Tableau Cloud. Uh, just a reminder, this is you know, our data-driven community. Um, we want to bring relevant content to you every month. Um, we've had, I think, Chris, how many sessions is this for us today? Uh, this is number uh, four, I believe. Number four. Awesome. Yeah. Middle of the month, every month, uh, we will be bringing new and relevant data topics, mostly revolving around Tableau, but just generally uh, different topics around data. So really excited for today's session. Um, today's agenda will look like this. We'll talk about the meeting format, uh, upcoming events that we have. Uh, today, our featured speakers uh, are going to range from Chris Monahan, our president at Zio Matrix, a 20-year veteran uh, in the analytics and data space. Uh, we have myself. I'll be your MC today. I'm, I'm Stuart Tinsley. I've been in Tableau uh, right about 10 years. I used to work for Tableau uh, back in the day. Uh, we also have a special guest, Patrick Landis. He's our lead solution architect. He's got many, many years in the data space, um, very technical individual. So excited for him to be uh, joining us today. Uh, in our presentation, we're going to be talking about how to simplify your migration to Tableau Cloud. And like all of our sessions, we'll end with a Q&A and a panel discussion so you can ask any questions that you have. Um, just a reminder, this is a Zoom meeting, uh, so please observe customary Zoom webinar etiquette. Uh, if we, we would love for you to participate, and if you if you want, please make comments and send questions uh, in the chat window. Uh, we will address any and all questions at the end. Um, we'll have 10, 15 minutes for Q&A uh, at the end of our presentation. And then, of course, we will record and send out uh, the session for today and all future sessions that we have. Uh, and we'll also have uh, a short follow-up survey. We always want to improve our events. So any, any feedback that you have is always welcome. Uh, and it's something that we take very uh, seriously into heart. So um, our upcoming events, we are taking a summer break for July. Most, most of us are probably taking summer vacations. So we will be off in July. We will not have any events. Uh, but the next event that we will hold will be on August 9th. We're going to be talking about data lakes and data pipelines. So this will be very, really good content here to talk about how you can uh, source data within your organization uh, and get that to the clouds, how you can centralize maybe multiple data sources, uh, make it easier for analytics. So that's our next session on August 9th. Um, prior or following that, uh, September 13th. Uh, we will have other data-driven community events uh, kicking off, right? Uh, and then we just wanted to mention that on um, Thursday, June 15th, Tableau hosting uh, their Data Dev Day. Um, this is a, a really good event where it's more of a technical deep dive that the Tableau developers will hold. Uh, we just want to make it, uh, you know, call that to, to folks on the call, their attention that this is coming up on June 15th. And without further ado, I will stop talking. I will pass it to uh, Chris uh, Monahan, our president. He will be uh, starting the presentation here about how you can simplify your migration to Tableau Cloud. All right, thanks, Stuart. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, uh, before I get things kicked off, just want to introduce you know our team again. Um, myself, Chris Monahan, president of Zeo Matrix. I've been doing data analytics for about twenty plus years, so got a lot of experience in the space. Um, Stuart will be uh, emceeing today as well, but um, he's done a, a lot of uh, activity on um, migrations as well. And then um, Patrick Landis, who's our lead solution architect, who has uh, a lot of years in with Tableau, uh, a lot of experience with Tableau server and cloud. So he's our expert today who's going to be walking you through the migration process. Um, so got a great panel here. Our team has done a lot of these Tableau cloud migrations. Um, they're really popular right now. A lot of people are looking to reduce their infrastructure costs, um, reduce their administration costs. So they're turning, uh, you know, they're, they're looking to migrate their Tableau servers over to Tableau cloud. And today in our presentation, we're going to share some of those best practices and sort of lay out an outline on, you know, what type of approach you might want to consider for your organization. So as Stuart mentioned, we'll have a Q&A panel at the end. Um, so please put your questions in the chat window and we'll address them then. 
So here's our agenda. Um, I'll, these are the topics I'll be covering. First, an overview of Tableau Cloud, um, talk about some of the architecture options and address something called Tableau Bridge. You all might have heard about it. Um, now you'll you'll learn a little bit more about it. Um, there's also, um, we'll talk about how you go about creating a migration plan for your organization. Um, then we'll jump into what is the migration process. And that's where uh, Patrick will be giving a live demonstration of the content migration tool, which helps automate the migration process to, from Tableau Server to Tableau Cloud. Really cool. You want to stay for that. And then at the end, we'll wrap up with best practices and recommendations. So a little bit of overview of Tableau Cloud. So what is Tableau Cloud? Um, Tableau Cloud is a fully hosted cloud-based SaaS solution um, that Tableau provides. It's really think of it like a hosted version of Tableau server. The upside is that because it's in the cloud, like all things cloud, you don't have to maintain a server. There's no administration and upgrades happen sort of automatically. Um, nothing, no, no interaction involved from your side. Um, Y'all might wonder like, is this a new product? What is it? Well, due to marketing, they have since called it, uh, it used to be called Tableau Online, but now it's called Tableau Cloud to align with some of the other Salesforce um, cloud uh, uh, options out there. So Tableau Cloud um, is formerly called Tableau Online. So now you might wonder, you know, what's the difference between Tableau Cloud and Tableau Server? As I mentioned, Tableau Cloud is fully hosted. You don't really have that administration with it. Um, people might wonder, well, I'm on Tableau Server now, you know, why even consider moving to cloud? Um, well, you know, you might want to stay on Tableau server if you if your organization really has specific requirements. Um, usually they're around sort of legal or compliance issues where they might want to keep tighter control on settings and governance. So if that's something that you want to do, then maybe staying on Tableau server is a good option for you, right? But from what we've seen, the trend is most organizations, even ones with um you know, SOX compliance, HIPAA compliance, all Tableau Cloud is certified. You can go ahead and move over to Tableau Cloud. So a lot of organizations are doing that. Um, what are the key benefits? Again, not to harp on it more, but it's less administration. If you're not excited about that, I don't know what, what will be. No more managing Tableau servers, um, whether it's on Linux or putting Windows patches, no more of that. Um, it's also, in our experience, we've seen a lot better performance and scalability, right? Tableau has, uh, since they are managing these servers, they have optimized these servers to scale and they know how to tune the product. So you're going to see better performance overall on Tableau Cloud. You're going to get those automatic upgrades. So whenever a new feature or ver uh, version release comes out, all that happens on Tableau Cloud first. So even before the, the products get released um, to the general public, Tableau Cloud is going to get updated. So you're always going to get automatic upgrades and access to the latest features. One of the things um, we see a lot with a lot of folks that are on Tableau server, they aren't keeping up with the upgrades as often. Um, they might only do one a year. Well, then you're definitely going to be behind on, on some of the latest and coolest stuff. So that's one of the cool benefits. Um, and one thing that sometimes gets overlooked too is that license management is easier. You're not going to have to put keys, paste keys, um, send keys or email keys to other people. All that is going to be done um, seamlessly through Tableau Cloud, and therefore you're going to have less, uh, you know, IT resources for managing, um, and then you're going to definitely have overall lower TCO. So those are the benefits we hear from clients um, that are looking to move over to Tableau Cloud. Um, here's one case study we did. Um, you know, it's a smaller, a bit smaller implementation. Um, they had about a 1,100 users, and the if you look at the object counts that they had, they had about a thousand data sources and 400 workbooks. Now that is something to note, and I'll touch on why that's important later in the presentation. But you know, the number of objects and what type of objects they are uh, really is critical in 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 determining what the the length and scope of the project is going to be. So in this case, they also had 150 uh, prep flows too, which added to some of the the migration time. But we were we worked with them to do an object inventory assessment, and we helped them come up with a migration. A strategy and a project plan, and then successfully migrated all of their content over and worked with their business um, to do the change management and to roll out Tableau Cloud across their organization. So this is a really cool, um, cool case study. Um, and, you know, the immediate ROI for them was that they got the stability that they weren't getting with Tableau server, and they were, uh, they were a couple versions behind. So they had the latest and greatest features now. And uh, so the overall, their business was a lot more happy and excited about it. So 
that's a little bit about Tableau Cloud. Um, you might be asking, so what are what what's sort of the architecture of Tableau Cloud? Like, how does it work? What does it look like? Um, you know, it really depends sort of on how you're connecting your data, and this will play into sort of your migration planning as well. Um, there's really you know two sort of data sources, right? There's your cloud-based data sources, which um, these. For, for those that aren't familiar with what that might mean, it's these are in the cloud, meaning external to your company's network, and they're outside the firewall. So these are sort of um, configured more uh, public, I should say, in the public cloud, right? Um, examples of this might be Snowflake, Redshift, Databricks, uh, Salesforce, Google Drive, things like that. Um, now, there's a gray area. They might technically fall into your network, how you've configured it, but generally, in general, they are accessible from the outside world. Um, then you have your internal data sources, right? They're on the network and behind your firewall. So things like that might be SQL Server, Postgres, Oracle, um, Hortonworks. So some of these data sources are going to be internal to your network. And depending on what um, which one you're connecting to, again, will determine on your migration strategy. Um, if you're using internal data sources, you will require something that's called Tableau Bridge. And Tableau Bridge is a, a, a little client that you would use to help um, connect to your internal data sources. Um, it's Tableau Bridge is, uh, like I said, a very lightweight application client. It takes uh, about a minute to install. Uh, you install it on a server that's inside your firewall. So if you have internal data sources, um, Tableau Cloud, um, out of the box can't talk to them because they're behind your firewall. So what you want to do is have this little proxy that can communicate and relay um, queries and requests data uh, between um, your internal network and connect to the data sources and pass that back to Tableau Cloud. So it's a little, little lightweight proxy that sort of sits inside your firewall. It's common practice to use. A lot of organizations use that. Again, if you're connecting to internal data sources, you would need that. If it's external, then you connect you can whitelist Tableau Cloud and connect it directly to those data sources like Snowflake or Databricks. Um, one comment too about Tableau Bridge that I, I will make is that Tableau Bridge, um, the way it works is that it, when you are scheduling any sort of extract refreshes or doing any sort of live queries, the data sources that you're connecting to in Tableau, those de data definitions, those data sources that you have in Tableau need to be published separately. They need to be published data sources. They can't be embedded in the workbook. If they are, then they won't automatically refresh through Tableau Bridge. So there's a part of the process, part of the migration process where you separate that out and republish them as separate data sources, and then they'll refresh accordingly. So little caveat there, it's, it's just something that needs to be uh, a step in the process that needs to be done, but I wanted to call that out. So what does the data architecture sort of look like? As I mentioned, um, if you're connecting to cloud data, you're going to connect directly from Tableau Cloud to your um, to your cloud data sources, be it Snowflake or Databricks or even Google Drive. Um, some of these you might want to whitelist for security reasons, right? So if you have a Snowflake environment set up, you would whitelist Tableau Cloud, which has an IP address for your Tableau Cloud site. You can whitelist that in Snowflake so that it's secure at that point, and only Tableau Cloud can connect to that that from the external world to your Snowflake instance, or be it whatever cloud instance you have. This is a this is the most easiest straightforward way to do a, a migration. If you're going from Tableau Server and you have just cloud data sources moving to Tableau Cloud, it is the easiest way to do it. Um, it requires the least amount of work. So this is uh, definitely ideal uh, if you can achieve sort of this, this scenario. Um, the second one is internal data sources. It's a little more complex in the migration strategy because you are now connecting to internal data sources. You have to introduce Tableau Bridge. Um, and that Tableau Bridge then needs to talk to Tableau Cloud. So you will require having a, a server um, in the middle that acts as that proxy to relay communication and data between your internal data sources and Tableau Cloud. Um, right now, uh, Tableau Bridge is only supported on Windows. Um, it will soon be out on Linux as well. Just something to consider there if you're talking to IT. But it would be sort of a server to manage. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I thought I'm doing this so I don't have to manage servers. Well, in this instance, there yes, it's true that you would still manage a server. However, uh, usually the requirements for the Tableau Bridge is going to be a lot less as far as size, memory, uh, processing, things like that. 
And in addition, um, the bridge client doesn't require a lot of maintenance, whereas a Tableau server requires a lot more administration. So the overhead and administration costs is, is uh, pretty minimal. And then the last option, which also is uh, uh, we we see as well, is you got a hybrid. So either you uh, you you're a large organization that has both cloud data sources and internal data sources, so you still need bridge, or you might be making that transition from from your internal data data sources over to the cloud, and it's taking a little bit longer because your data warehouse development might be taking longer. Whatever the scenario is, you might have to run a hybrid option. So just keep that in mind. So. When we're talking about creating a migration plan, um, there are several different approaches that you might want to consider, um, and we sort of bucket them into three. Um, the first one is called sort of a total migration, and that's going to be your, your lift and shift, where literally you're going to migrate everything you have in Tableau Server today over to Tableau uh, Cloud. And um, the reason that's easiest is because um, it's a one-to-one, -one, apples to apples. So at the end of the day, whatever you have now in Tableau Cloud should match your old environment in Tableau uh, Tableau Server. Um, if you're going to go this route, um, I would recommend cleaning up first before you do the migration. So remove any old objects, things you don't need. Um, and I would also recommend not reorganizing things during the migration process. Sometimes we get asked that question a lot. Like I, it, it's very tempting. Like, oh, we have a new environment now. Let's reorganize all the project site folder, uh, project folders. Um, it is very tempting, but it does make the testing a lot more difficult because now you're not com comparing a, sort of the paths, apples to apples. So it just adds a little bit of time. It can be done, but best to launch first and then do the reorganization as maybe a dot follow up phase. Um, as far as the partial migration, that's where you pick and choose. And sometimes we get asked that, like, hey, we got a ton of stuff, but we only want, want to move these subset of, of objects. Well, that also can be done, but to, to the same point, like picking and choosing with the content migration tool um, takes a little bit more time. Um, and especially if the objects you want to move are scattered across many different folders, it just, uh, it's, it's just a, a little more time intensive in trying to do that migration effort. So you know, number two is probably not the 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 approach we typically see. Um, I would say number one with the total migration is the most common. Um, and then the third one, of course, I call it the DIY. So it's like you can automate a lot of the migration here, but on smaller instances where it's a smaller set of workbooks or dashboards, let's say it's even like twenty five dashboards and maybe you know fifteen data sources. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to go through this whole migration strategy and stuff like that. It's pretty obvious. You can just download the download the workbooks data sources, republish them to Tableau Cloud and call it a day. So don't keep the third option. Uh, always keep the third option in the back of your mind, especially if you have a smaller implementation, because, you know, that that makes things a little bit easier. Right. So. All right. So what is involved and what should you consider? Um during the migration planning process, what are the steps? So, first of all, as I mentioned, you want to you want to perform a Tableau environment assessment, and with this, there's a lot of things you want to consider about your environment. Um, is it is this first of all going to be internal or external facing solution? I would say uh, most of ours are going to be internal, but um, you know, most people have internal, um, but there are uh, definitely external use cases that we've migrated as well. And you need to take those into consideration because um, that'll affect sort of your uh, your approach and your timelines as well, and and sort of that level of communication that you're going to need as you do the migration process to let people know that you are switching platforms. Um, secondly, you know you need to understand: is there going to be any sort of SAML or single sign-on authentication? Is that required? Is it already being used today? If not, is that something that you want to do when you make the switch? We do it all the time. We have a lot of folks that don't use um, SAML um, on they use local authentication or whatever, um, you know, uh, in Tableau Server, and we go ahead and make that switch now in Tableau Cloud. So now would be a good time to do that. Um, when you talk about um, how many objects that need to be migrated during that assessment, look at how many data sources you have, how many workbooks you have, how many prep flows you have. And how many of those can be consolidated or cleaned up, as I mentioned, before the migration? Um, and if you have uh, multi-site environments on your Tableau server, consider maybe merging some of those into a single site. So for example, if you have a, uh, uh, three sites on your current Tableau server, 
when you stand up your site in Tableau Cloud, um, a consideration is going to be um, licensing costs. And so if you're expecting to have three sites also on Tableau Cloud, there's not that overlap in licenses across sites in Tableau Cloud. So what you would do is you would stand up Tableau, um, uh, your one uh, site in Tableau Cloud, and then create project folders to represent you know, the different sites um, that you have on your Tableau server. So that's one approach. Um, you can also go the multi-site approach, but again, there's some licensing implications that you'd want to talk to your sales rep about. Um, the second step here is to diagram your infrastructure. As I, as we saw in the prior slides there, there's a couple different ways that you could configure your architecture. You want to understand if you, if Tableau Bridge is going to be involved, um, what networking um, and, uh, and firewall rules might have to be changed, right, if you're dealing with internal data sources. So take all of that in consideration to consideration, talk to your IT group. Um, if you do have Tableau Bridge involved, you're going to want to head and stand up a tab, uh, Tableau Bridge server and get your system accounts lined up in, and, and understand who's going to manage these accounts and manage Tableau, the Tableau Bridge server. So go ahead and do your planning with IT and diagram your infrastructure. The third step here is creating a project plan. And that is uh, going ahead and uh, talking to the business and understand what is the good window for doing the migration? And in addition, what is the window for them assisting you in signing off and doing the UAT, right? And what are your team resources for doing the migration? Um, and it, can the business contribute or assist with some of that as well? Um, and then lastly, uh, you want to you know finally decide what type of approach you're going to do. Is this going to be a total or partial or manual migration approach? So. That's that's what we've seen. Uh, here's an example of a migration plan. Uh, this is a simple, smaller, four-week migration. Um, and our approach is to sort of take it in two phases. Phase one is definitely going to be the migration. And step two is sort of the sunset phase, we call it, where you have, um, um, by default, uh, Tableau grants you 60 days um, of overlap between when you purchase Tableau Cloud to Tableau Server so that you have enough time to perform the migration. Um, when you do the migration, um, obviously you want to go ahead and sunset your Tableau Server at some point. So phase one is migrating all the objects and performing the migration itself. And you want to, in this case, you know, on a shorter one, you want to leave like a week or two, right, where you, you have that sunset period where, you know, you might have people call in and say, hey, I'm having an issue with this workbook or something like that. Um, you can always have that Tableau server to refer back to and look at what's going on there in case something's not functioning correctly. And then you perform the sunset. So definitely approach it in a two phase, in two phases. As I mentioned, you'll then perform the object inventory assessment and identify and prioritize like what needs to be moved. Um, and then perform the migration um, of, of the objects, do the UAT, and then do any performance testing. And if you need to install Tableau Bridge, work with your IT department to set that up. That's all phase one. And then you approach the sunset of your Tableau server. The one key thing I want to harp on, uh, and I'll, I'll do it again, is the change management. You want to communicate early and often to your users, um, be it they internal or even external. So in internal users, you want to communicate with the business, tell them what's coming up. How you're going to be logging in. Sometimes there's some nuances in how they log in, like a lot of default um, login names um, we see on Tableau Server are their first initial last name. And then when they come into uh, Tableau Cloud, it's definitely going to be your email address. So that's a slight change, not a big one, and they might want to know. In addition, if you're implementing uh, single sign-on, which they're not used to or they didn't have before on Tableau Server, you want to communicate that too. And lastly, some of the administrators might have to use MFA, multi-factor authentication, and that's a change too in the process, right? So all this needs to be communicated. Um, you know, uh, there's a new URL that they'll be using for Tableau Cloud, um, you know, uh, unless you're doing like a DNS alias rerouting or re, uh, so redirecting. So uh, there's all this needs to be communicated often. And then at the end, um, for some folks, there might be some training involved, right? You might have been on a really old version of Tableau, and now there's a lot of new features. And that's when this is the perfect opportunity to get people excited about Tableau and start leveraging all the new capabilities you have. And so this is the perfect opportunity to do that, and you want to promote and foster that adoption. So start doing some lunch and learns Um you know, do Tableau days. Um, you can even bring it to your uh, COE and um, really sort of uh, promote, you know, 
you know, the, the benefits of moving to Tableau Cloud. So that's what an example migration plan looks like. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look now um, on uh, what the migration process is. I know a lot of you guys might have a lot of questions here. Um, I'll go over real quick, high level, uh, sort of the approach, and then we'll jump into a demo of what the content migration tool looks like. So uh, here are the objectives when we uh, when we plan on doing a migration, right? First and foremost, you want to make sure you're simplifying this this migration to Tableau Cloud. We want the process to be sim simple and easy. Um, you want to reduce the administration and infra infrastructure costs, so take that into consideration. We want to migrate all the sites, uh, environments and sites to Tableau Cloud, so nothing is left on Tableau Server. Again, addressing any security or permissions that need to be done, uh, whether it's single sign-on or whatnot. Uh, and then we want to ensure that you have better performance than what you have today. So test um, text extract performances as well. And then lastly, there needs to be a knowledge transfer. So, you know, you want to make sure that your internal BI team knows how to support things now on Tableau, um, uh, Tableau Cloud versus Tableau Server. It's less administration, but they still need to know how to handle certain situations, like if Tableau Bridge, for example, has um, um, any hiccups or things like that. So just a little bit of knowledge transfer there. Uh, this is this is uh, our process and methodology, like I showed before, uh, similar to that project plan. You're going to start off reviewing the requirements, um, do an object inventory assessment. Go ahead and start your project planning, right, in the phase one and phase two that I, I mentioned. And then you're going to iterate um, uh, per site on migrating your data sources, your workbooks, and then performing that UAT testing. Um, I will mention that you know during the UAT testing, you want to um, make sure that you keep the uh, migration or the testing window as small as possible, because as you're doing the migration process, right, um, your current Tableau server environment is still up and running. And so there's going to be some delta changes. People are naturally going to be making some changes, and you need to sync those changes. So there's scripts and stuff that we have that we leverage to, to find out those deltas, and we call those little delta syncs. Um, you want to do those, but you want to minimize the, some of the migration time and UAT time so that you don't have as, uh, the longer the period, the more likely there's going to be more changes. So you want to minimize that. Um, and then after that, you launch. So this is what it looks like high level. Um, I sort of try to put something together here for what a two month mi migration might look like, right? So you might spend the first week doing some of the planning and configuration, security, Tableau Bridge. Um, and then, uh, you know, weeks three to five, you would do the actual migration itself and then have a two week testing period, right? And then you do that support, which might be, I don't know, a couple weeks, uh, depending on sort of your comfort level and how much time you have uh, with Tableau Server still. And then there's that sunset period where you're going to then start that, uh, you know, making sure everything's um, working properly on Tableau Cloud before you go ahead and turn your Tableau Server off. So, that's what it looks like. So high level, uh, again, giving you an overview of what the migration um, approach looks like. What I want to do now is to turn it over to uh, Patrick, who's going to go ahead and share with you, you know, one of the tools that we use to do the migration itself. It's a tool that's provided by Tableau, um, and it, it assists with automating the migration process. It's called Content Migration Tool. So we're going to do a live demo now. And with that, I will turn it over to uh, Patrick. All right, thank you. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Awesome. So what we're looking at here is the content migration tool. So when you come into this, uh, you'll start with this screen right here where uh, you will go ahead and start a new plan here. Uh, we won't save that one. So you'll start in this view right here where you'll have your source and your destination. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is sign into your Tableau uh, server and then sign into your Tableau cloud as the, the destination. In this case, for this demo, we're just gonna use the uh, Tableau server I have set up and we'll just do a quick little demonstration here. So within the connection screen here, you'll have, it'll automatically default to Tableau on, online right here. What we'll need to do is we'll come in and we'll create a new connection to that either Tableau server or Tableau cloud. So from within here, I already have some saved, but you click new connection right here, give it a cool name, uh, server, and then you plop in the URL 
And then you have some options to do personal access token, browser-based sign-in, or username and password. Uh, either Any of these are fine. Um, in this demo, I'll be using username and password. So I already have one set up here. And so in this case, I have my credentials already uh, filled in, and I did that twice. So let's go ahead and select uh, the first one as our, our first uh, our source server. So I'll click connect. It will pop up with the sign-in information here. We click sign in, and then it'll ask us, hey, which uh, site do you want to use as your source? So in this case, I have this test site here that has a few workbooks that we're going to be migrating over from test to prod. So we'll click on test, and it'll go ahead and, and gather the information from your source site. And then here, we'll go and click on destination. In this case, we, we can use the same connection string since we're using the same server. In the case of migrating to cloud, you would select cloud, and then you'd sign into your cloud instance. So we want to move this, inf this information and these workbooks over to prod. Just double check here, test, prod, perfect. So from here, we go on down to this next button here, or we can navigate over here on the left-hand side to our next section, which is projects. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. We can click selection here. And so what we do is it's going to say, hey, which uh, projects are you wanting to specify? You can either come in here and specify specific projects to move, or in, I'd say 99% of the cases, I always select all projects here. And then we click next, or go to the next section over on the left. And we can then specify some different options. If you don't have those projects already built on the uh, destination side, you can click this button here. I always like to click all of these. And we try to copy project owners, apply user man, uh, mappings, so on and so forth. And then we select, we go on to the next section. And this is where you start to specify some workbooks. You can either move over all the workbooks or uh, part of your uh, sort of inventory of workbooks here. In this case, we're going to go ahead and move everything over. Then you go down to mapping, and in here, you can actually specify different things. So you can specify, hey, I want to rename a workbook, change the project destination for these workbooks, prefixes and suffix suffixes, if you need to do that for organization purposes, so on and so forth. And then we also have transformations. So within this transformation section, you can actually replace actuals, parameter values, images, replace text, things of that nature. So you could actually come in here, specify, hey, which uh, workbook has a parameter. You can come in here, select that workbook, and then make changes to that parameter and the values within that. And then coming down here, data source transformations. So if you have uh, workbooks that have uh, data sources that are embedded, you can come in here and there's an option to replace the tables, uh, set the connection information, so on and so forth. So you can make transformations to the actual um, calculations and different types of things for SQL and connection information here. You can also remove the extract. Say, for instance, you have a really big extract you want to move from your source to a destination location, you can remove that extract to hopefully lighten the load there. And then you can recreate that extract once you move it over to your prod server or cloud. And then we also have publish options here. Sorry, that, hold on just a second. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can still hear you. Yeah, I, I keep getting a pop up saying it. it uh, my microphone's not working, but it's still working. Yeah, you're good. Uh, so moving along, so you can um, come in here. You have several different options here for workbook publishing. Uh, you can copy the workbook owners, apply user mappings, copy extract refresh schedules, so on and so forth. And then coming along, you also select your data sources, and then. You can also add different mappings here, similar to the workbooks where you can rename the data sources, change the projects, uh, prefixes and suffixes if you need to do that for organization. You can also do data source transformations. So you can also specify connection information here. 
remove extracts. And then this one right here is important for when you move to the cloud because everything needs to be published separately. You would use this option here called use Tableau Bridge. And so what this is going to do is it's going to convert all of the embedded data sources you have within your workbooks to being published separately so that it works for the cloud. So you can come in here, click on this. It gives you um, some search criteria here. If you needed to say search for a specific connection type that you wanted to um, move to a published uh, data source, you could. And you can come in here, click on preview results. In my case, I'll, I don't have any published data sources here that it would, it would find. And then once you have everything configured here, you select this and it says use Tableau Bridge. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that just for the example to, to show what it looks like when it's uh, migrating. I don't have anything that needs to be published separately for this example. Um, but then moving along, we have this published data source options. Again, a lot like the workbook section. You can overwrite newer data sources, copy permissions, so on and so forth. We're going to go ahead and copy the data source owner. And then you also have options to add tags, remove tags, apply extract refresh schedules, so on and so forth. So lots and lots of options for you to look at uh, when migrating content from uh, source to destination. And then we have this important section here called mapping. Of course, there was an error. Um, so we click on mapping here. And then from within here, you can do your domain mapping, user mapping, group mappings, or you can import those mappings uh, based on a CSV file. So this would be, say, for instance, you want to carry over all of the user configuration and have all of your workbooks mapped to the correct ownership. What you can do is you can actually use this user mapping section here and specify, hey, I want uh, this user to match the, a user over on the destination site. Uh, same for groups, you can specify this group, it may be named a little bit differently in your source site, and it may be uh, a different group name in your destination, but let's go ahead and map those together. So we can do all that mapping within here. And then we have another section called scripts. Uh, so this is, you can run scripts uh, pre and post migration, um, and you can set up the parameters and working directories and things for those here. And then you also have this last one, which is plan options, refresh extracts after migration, uh, automatically create uh, extract refresh schedules that don't exist. And how does it how does this error uh, handle errors uh, in the migration? So you can click on continue migration if workbook or data source fails. You can also do enable um, version control. And so what that's going to do is it's actually going to download your workbooks and put it into a folder for you. Um, same with data sources, workbooks, and data sources. And then so from here, we can go ahead and select a plan name, and then we can save this. So let's go ahead and call it test. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then it's actually going to go out and create a TCMX file. And so I'm going to go ahead and just put that here in uh, my desktop folder, uh, local disk, users desktop test just for now. So it saves it. And then from here, we can click review. And it's going to give you an overview of everything that you've selected thus far. And then from here, if everything looks good, we can click run. Now, just before I run this, I wanted to double check uh, some of these uh, things I checked. I think because I haven't done any uh, actual mapping here, I'm not going to do the supply user mapping. Just don't want it to fail. So I'm going to go back to this run migration. I'm going to click run. And let's see if it actually runs for us here. So it's going to go out and connect to the server, download the workbooks, and then push them to the destination that we specified. So yeah, as you can see here, it also output the user matching. So I didn't have the users in that secondary site there. And so it didn't find that. And so it skipped that section for us. So now it's publishing the workbooks. 
And once this is done, we'll just take a look really quick and we can see what it looks like on the server. So let me go ahead and stop sharing and reshare my screen real quick. Did the wrong screen here. So I can come back up here to the Tableau site and we can see if I go to test, we have these workbooks here. And now that we go to prod, if we go to explore all workbooks, we can see that we have these new workbooks published to our, our destination site. Or in this case, it would be Tableau Cloud. So thank you very much. That's a quick overview of the content migration tool, how it works. And there's lots and lots of options for you to use to tailor that to your specific needs when migrating from server to cloud. All right. Well, thank you, Patrick. That was an awesome demo. Very cool. Uh, thanks for walking us through that. Um, just so everybody knows, like that, you know, that's just one of the tools that's provided, um, you know, and one of the tools we use during our migration process. Um, there's some scripts and things also that you can you can use to make things a little bit easier as you do your migration. Um, I do want to note one thing, and, and Patrick, feel free to chime in. I, I know we often get asked, like, oh, cool. Well, then it's just going to migrate everything for me. Well, there's some some caveats there. Like, um, it does do a lot of the heavy lifting, uh, depending on sort of what you're utilizing in Tableau server right now, it might do 90, 95% of what you need. Heck, it might do 100%. Um, but there are some things that it doesn't migrate. Like, uh, you know, some uh, some of the things might be like sub, uh, subscriptions. Um, some of the extract uh, refresh schedules don't uh, alerts. Um, custom views is one thing that doesn't um, get migrated. And I know a lot of folks... Um, don't really some some people don't even leverage custom views. Um, that's where you're saving your filter selections and uh, on your dashboards. Uh, some people use it heavily, so that's something to consider. Um, and and there's ways to approach this, and we can certainly advise you on strategies we've seen. Sometimes we have our um, we have the business go ahead and create that during the UAT process, right? They know their schedules, they know their custom views. So during that migration testing phase, why not go ahead and recreate some of that stuff? So there's ways around some of those limitations. Uh, there's other scripting options as well. So um, that's just something I wanted to call out. Yep. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen uh, one more time. And again, thank you, Patrick, very much. Um, so so just to wrap up here, let's let's talk about some um, you know best practices and recommendations that we've seen. So when it comes to um, you know as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, any sort of cleanup and reorganization that you want to do, I typically like to do that prior to the migration. Or if you must wait, go ahead and do it at the end, right? If you really feel like you want to launch with a big bang, then maybe start that reorganization and cleanup prior to uh, the actual launch and then I mean prior to the migration and that way when you launch after migration it's done um, otherwise I would wait till afterwards because reorganize reorganizing the folders during the migration process really makes it uh, more difficult um, uh, the other thing is when you're doing these migrations be aware that sometimes up to 60 percent of your objects might not 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 might not need to be migrated. You might not find that they're not being used. It might be old or tests or some sort of temporary report that's been created. So we have seen it as high as 60%. So don't be alarmed if that's the case. And, in, and if it is, then maybe take some time to clean up before you do the migration. Um, as I mentioned, the total lift and shift or even the manual approach are, are sometimes the easiest strategies we've seen. Um, we don't see the, uh, the partial migration approach as much. Um, but it is used um, a lot for like larger implementations. So um, to each of their own, you know, sort of figure out what approach works best for you. I would use that two-phased approach, like we said, focus on the migration first, and then the lower hanging fruit, things that maybe are still in, you know, need to be addressed. You can do it during that uh, shorter sunset, uh, Tableau server sunset period. Um, as I mentioned, you want to shorten your, your, your migration time as much as possible. And sometimes, We've talked to folks when they do their UAT period with the business, they're able to uh, negotiate a, a blackout period. That would be a luxury. A lot of times it doesn't happen, but if you can, right, that would minimize that that delta change sinking that we were talking about there, right? So, um, so if possible, just take that into consideration because the longer you you do some of that testing, you know, there can be uh, more changes obviously that you need to sync later. Um, 
I would, uh, if at all possible, remove the dependency on Tableau Bridge, um, just so that you have um, more of a uh, more of a seamless user experience and sort of what you have there with um, you know uh, Tableau Server today. It will be more of a one to one with your Tableau Server rather than having Bridge involved. Um, if uh, you do have to use Tableau Bridge, um, I would definitely recommend pooling. So pooling is similar to clustering, right? You actually have two Tableau Bridge servers at that point, and that way it, it covers you in case of failover, and that way you have that redundancy. Um, one thing that I do, this is a little pro tip here, you know, the default out of the box is sort of 10 concurrent jobs at any point. You want to increase that connection pool size up to, like, depending on the size of your Tableau Bridge server, maybe as high as 30, it could be higher, it sort of depends. Um, but there's two settings there, the connection pool size and the max remote job concurrency settings, which I put there. Play around with that um, and see what works for you, but that'll get you more throughput. So as you start doing your extract refresh schedules, you're not limited to 10. Otherwise you're gonna start seeing some sort of uh, timeout settings and jobs failing, and you're gonna wonder why. And that's because it's just not getting enough throughput to go uh, run, run your jobs. Um, again, if, uh, one other pro tip is that, uh, as Patrick mentioned, you want with the content migration tool for the permissions and assignment of groups and, and things like that, you want to use, you want to make sure your uh, Tableau cloud is seated with all the users and groups that exist in your Tableau server. If you're using SAML, you, you don't actually have to script any of that. You could. The other approach is to go ahead and use your SAML provider to sync and pull in all those users and groups into Tableau cloud um, automatically. So that's a little pro tip, could save you a little bit of time. And then last, again, I harp on this again, and I'll close with this. Don't forget the importance of change management. So communicate early and often. Let people know these changes are coming and, um, and that, uh, and that you know, things will be slightly changing as far as where the URL to log on. Now, if they had any bookmarks, they won't be bookmarked anymore. Little changes like that can help make the process a little bit easier. With change management, you always want to talk to the client, you know, talk to your business, right? Um, who is your end client and identify what, you know, what are some of the risks and challenges that might come up as we're doing the migration and how can we address those just to make sure you're, you're um, there's a general understanding of, of what, you know, what the process is going to be and how we would address any changes. Um, go ahead and communicate those changes and just go ahead at the end also uh, make sure that you're promoting um, training and adoption so that you really see the benefits of what moving to Tableau Cloud is. So with that, we have about 10 minutes. I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, if you have any questions, certainly reach out to us. Um, here's my information, Stuart and Patrick's uh, info as well. Um, if you have questions about today's presentation, please reach out. But we will then open right now with a Q&A panel discussion. So, um, Stuart, do we have any questions um, right now? We don't have any questions right now, but I, I have, you know, being a part of so many migrations, I know a couple that come top to mind. So we'll probably wait on some questions coming in. So as we do that, um, I know one question that comes up a lot, um, and for the folks on the call, you might be thinking this, but what are some of the challenges that we've seen pop up during a migration? Are there specific challenges, Chris, that we could talk to? Pitfalls, things to look out for, uh, things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, you know, one that comes to mind is um, not knowing your username and passwords. That 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 sounds like an easy one, but it's uh, in, it's crazy how big of a showstopper that is. Because when you're doing these migrations, um, your your data sources, you you want to um, the content migration tool can migrate, you know, any embedded credentials. But a lot of times, people want to convert those data sources over to a system account or something like that. If you're going to do that, take an inventory of your data sources prior to the migration. Understand you can look there right in Tableau. If you go to explore, click on data sources, you can see all the data type, data, uh, the connections and what the connection types are. Get that inventory list ahead of time before you even start your migration. That way you're prepared and there's no delays in finding out who owns those data sources. So that's one that comes to mind. I don't know, Patrick, do you have any other ones? Um, no, not off the top of my head. Uh, I mean, there's just so many questions that I've, I've been posed with. Uh, bridge sometimes can yeah, bridge, 
Yeah. Bridge yeah. is usually uh, a big one that oftentimes uh, people, there's lots of, um, at, at least initially getting it set up. So so Bridge can be a little uh, quirky getting set up, but once you have it set up, it's, it's usually hands-free. And so, um, yeah, so we could definitely walk you through that process if, if uh, you need assistance with that, so. Yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. Yeah, sometimes there's some little nuances there on how to set it up with a service account. So that that can be a little. Right. Yep. Yeah. Good one. Um, so it sounds like it sounds like the content migration tool, based on the presentation, is is really helpful, depending on the size that you know uh, of the migration itself. How do our customers get access to that content migration tool? Um, yeah, so so that uh, is either available through advanced management. Um, there's also a free version that's uh, available through the Tableau pre-release uh, program. So that is a program that you can sign up for and download that as well. Uh, we, you know, if we're assisting, we are a member of that program. We can certainly uh, help you out with that, or you can download it yourself. Um, and they always have the latest version up there. Yep. Um, I know another question that comes up is. What does testing and the rollout look like for Tableau Cloud? And maybe Chris, you could talk to, you know, if a client's coming from Tableau Server, they may be accustomed to having a dev, a test, and a prod environment. And what does that look like in Tableau Cloud, knowing that there's really one site, they're, they don't have those additional environments. Maybe you could talk to that too. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So, so yeah, especially for um, maybe some some uh, folks that provide analytics, like embedded analytics or something through their uh, uh, some sort of SaaS solution where they're embedding Tableau, they are used to more the traditional dev, test, and prod environments. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, when you move to Tableau Cloud, you're only going to get you know one site, or else there's some sort of you know. If you set up separate sites, well, then there's some licensing implications that you want to consider. So if you are running a true dev test and prod, um, let's say internally, then most likely all those users are all the same users or a subset of users across those environments. So what you want to do is create a um, one site in Tableau Cloud, and then you would populate all your users, and then you would create um, your root would have your production folders as normal, and then you would create a, a dev and a uh, test uh, project folder. And that's where you would then uh, manage some of that, um, manage your objects accordingly in in sort of those environment project folders, if you want to call it that. And it's a fairly easy process, I'm assuming, to move uh, content that's in those kind of sandbox dev test folders in the production. In Tableau Cloud. Yeah. Yep. Cool. yep. Simple, simple move. I know another another question that comes up, and it might be harder to answer, but typically, how long do these migrations take for customers? Yeah, yeah, um, that's uh, uh, they vary in size. Um, I know that uh, obviously, depending on the number of objects and how many sites you have, um, some of the uh, sort of smaller to mid-sized ones can be as short as two weeks up to uh, a, you know a few weeks. Um, uh, some of the larger multi-site ones where it requires um, more, uh, where they have a lot of users and more parts of the business, I would say those can take up to two months um, to, to maybe three max. Um, it just sort of depends on, on uh, the number of objects and uh, how, many, how much regression testing you want to do and what your, your organization feels comfortable with. So that's really the long term. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. I think that's uh, that's all the questions that I, I typically hear. Uh, if anyone has any additional questions, please feel free to use the chat. Uh, and, and, and by the way, always feel free to reach out to us. Our emails are right here, as, as Chris is showing. Uh, happy to connect, happy, happy to help in any way that we can. Um, we'll look forward to meeting again in August, talk about data pipelines, talk about uh, centralizing data and making it easier for analytics. But uh, yeah, I want to thank everyone for attending today.